the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray those words of the Lord's Prayer, weekly, daily, perhaps even multiple times each day. And we'll pray them later in the Mass after the Prayer of Consecration. It's a prayer which is so deeply embedded in our bones as Christians that we rarely stop to think about what it means. Our daily bread is a curious phrase. The meaning of the Greek word, usually translated as daily, isn't fully understood. In fact, the Lord's Prayer is the only place in the New Testament where this word appears. Supernatural, super substantial, and for the future are just some suggestions of what it might mean. But the overall sense is clear. In the Lord's Prayer, we ask God for our bread, for what sustains us each and every day, for the food without which we would surely die. We echo the crowd who respond to Jesus in today's gospel with, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And it's today on this harvest festival that we give thanks for our daily bread. Harvest festival is a great leveler. Whoever we are, young or old, rich or poor, city dweller or country bumpkin, we all owe our existence to the fruit of the land. Today, we acknowledge our dependence on the land and on the fruits of creation, which earth has given and human hands have made. And we give thanks for God's fulfillment of the petition we make to him each time we pray our Father. It's a thanksgiving for all the particular and different ways that God feeds us. I'd like to focus on three of the ways God feeds us, which we might remember in particular in our thanksgiving today. First, and most obviously, there is the food of ordinary life, the abundant bounty of God's creation, which we receive day by day. Each time we prepare and eat our daily bread, we are invited to recall our dependence on our creator and on the bountiful creation he has placed under our stewardship. How might we respond to this invitation? Perhaps by taking the time to acknowledge where it comes from, saying grace or a short mental prayer of thanksgiving before we eat simply reminding ourselves that the gifts we receive each day are just that, gifts. For all things come from God, and of his own has he given us. We're also invited to recall our dependence on each other. Almost all the food we eat has passed through the hands of other human beings often relying on a vast network of people and systems before it arrives at our table. And although we may prefer to forget, some of these systems are more exploitative and wasteful than others. As we give thanks today for creation, we might pause to consider our own role to play in contributing to these exploitative systems. When we remember the divine origin of our daily bread, God opens our eyes to an often forgotten Christian duty. The duty to source the food we eat in ways which minimize the damage to the people and the world around us. God reminds us that this earth is something we have received as a gift and as a responsibility. In today's Gospel from John, this story follows on from the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. 
A crowd has followed Jesus to Capernaum. They're seeking the man who could multiply five loaves and two fish into enough to feed thousands. Yet Jesus has something very particular to say to them about their motivations. They looked for him, he says, not because they recognized the miracle that had taken place, <clears throat> but because they ate of the loaves and were filled, because they were hungry and they had seen what he could do. Just like their ancestors who ate the manna in the desert, <clears throat> the crowd is only interested in God when there's something in it for them. <clears throat> but their hunger is misplaced. It's a hunger for the food that perishes. Jesus tells them they should hunger instead for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. <clears throat> This is the second way that God feeds us, with Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven and gives life to the world. He is even more fundamental to our existence than the food of ordinary life. And what you give when you love someone is the gift of yourself. It's natural then that our Lord and Saviour shows us the depth of his love by giving us nothing less than the gift of himself. And so when Christ promises us the food of eternal life, he's not talking about the manna that sustained the Israelites in the desert, nor even the food we eat and thank God for each day, but the gift of faith, faith in the one whom the Father has sent, faith to encounter him in word and sacrament and the face of our neighbor. Jesus is the bread of life, the source and summit of all our being, the foundation of our lives without which we are nothing, the answer to our hunger and thirst. He is what we ask for when we pray for daily bread the bread of life. It's a metaphor grounded in a reality which combines these two ways that God feeds us. And it points to the third way God feeds us, the Holy Eucharist, in which God feeds our souls just as much as our bodies. In the Eucharist, we find a tangible expression of our hunger and thirst for God for the food of ordinary life and the food of eternal life. In her extended meditation on the love of God, the 14th century mystic, Julian of Norwich, speaks movingly of our Lord using the language of motherhood. She says, the mother can give her child the milk to suck, but our precious mother Jesus, he can feed us with himself and does most courteously and most tenderly with the blessed sacrament that is precious food of true life. So as we come to the altar, or as we make our spiritual communion, or even as we gaze upon the altar and see the perfect sacrifice made once in love for all of us, for all time, let us bring with us our yearning for God, our spiritual and physical hunger, our desire to receive the bread of life. Let us allow it to change our eating that we may become more grateful for and mindful of the food we put on our tables, never forgetting its source and summit in our precious mother, Jesus. And as we pray today and each day, Give us this day our daily bread. Let us say with St. Paul, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen.